Welcome to the Data Tech channel. So today we are going to discuss about Spark MLib, which is called Spark Machine Learning Library. So Spark has a framework. It supports batch processing and stream processing. It's a very important part of big data developer skill set and even in our projects. But today I'm going to show you as a machine learning engineer or a data scientist, how to use Spark with one sample program. So the program which I'm going to show you is MBA algorithm, which is the traditional example of market basket algorithm, which is a very famous algorithm in data mining and machine learning. So the agenda is just to show you a demo of how the Spark MLIP can be used and how the libraries can be used. And before we get into this video, I made a dedicated video in which I have explained as a machine learning engineer or a data scientist, why should I have to learn Spark-like components in big data? So that's a dedicated video. I hardly recommend you to watch the video and especially if you are a machine learning engineer or a data scientist or an AI guy. Fine, let's get into the topic. So here I have author of the code and I will execute line by line. So here I have my Spark shell over here and this code is completely in Scala. I know as a machine learning engineer or a data scientist, you would prefer Python. Yeah, you can even go for Python and Spark. Spark supports Python and we call it as a PySpark. So now I'm going to show you in Scala Spark for this particular example. So I have two imports. So spark.sql.spark session and then spark ml fp growth. So the spark sql import which is needed to make use of all the data frame functionalities like we have data frames at python so similar to that in spark we do have so just to make use of all the transformations and functions within this and related to this data frame we need this import and then i'm just importing this ml library which use fp growth we call it as frequent pattern matching algorithm Algorithms or the code like market basket algorithm example uses such algorithm like FP growth to make use of this pattern matching analysis. Fine. So this is our sample data. So it's a sequence. So I just created as a sequence. So I have like IDs, transaction IDs, and then within array, I have some items like milk, bread, butter, and then bread, butter, milk, bread, and so on. So so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to execute these two imports first. Okay, so the imports are loaded successfully and then I'm going to load this data set as well. So Spark executes your code in bottom to top approach and that means like only when there is an action like write or save to a file when you invoke some actions and then only the entire compilation will be get started. Okay, so we call it as lazy evaluation. We do have this in Python as well, right? Fine. So now I have to convert this data set to a data frame. So I just create a variable df equal to data, which is the variable name of the sequence, to df, and I'm giving a structure for my data set, id, comma, items. Now just execute this. Okay, you can see the structure has been got created. So it automatically identifies that ID is an integer and item is actually an array of string. That's fine. So now the next part is like, I have to make use of this FP growth model. So when you take this FP growth and especially in market basket algorithm, there is two important points. One is the support and then the confidence. Now. I'm just invoking, I'm just creating an object for this FP growth and then invoking set items call and I'm passing my item, so which is actually the list of items. And then I'm just giving a support and confidence. So, okay, let's pass here and let's discuss about what is the support and confidence. Now, imagine you are the owner of the particular supermarket and you do have all these transactions happens at the end of day. So we have seven transactions starts from zero. And now you have to do some sort of analysis with the transaction informations what you have already and you have to predict how to arrange these items in your shelf right so that the customers will be get attracted with the product right so now for each product so if you take milk is one product right so in the first transaction you have three products so just consider each product let's starts with milk if you take milk i have to give a support value for it 
So the more support I give as a owner, I'll give more importance to the product so that I'll be placing this product somewhere in the front of the shelf so that all the customer can see. I have four transaction of data which has milk. Okay. So how they calculate the support. So I have four. Right. Divide by you have seven transactions. So four divided by seven. So now four divided by seven which is like 0.5 is the support that I'm giving to that particular product. You can see I'm just giving the minimum support of that product is 0.5. And this values can be altered in the over the period of time. Right. So whenever you see some spikes in your transaction from yesterday's transaction, you can again rerun the model with the input data. And then what is the confidence? Now let's talk about the association rule between the products. So how often an item and a rule appears together? For example, if you take milk and bread or bread and butter, so which two of the product are appear together? So that is the confident I have to give value for calculating the confidence. So before I gave a support for the product, now I need the confidence which two combination will have a great sale, right? So for that, what I have to do? So we do have a formula for that. So for example, if you take bread and butter right there is two items in a transaction so bread is in your left hand side and butter is in your right hand side so now you pick bread as your priority and then along with bread you find which other products got the great sale when it got combined with bread okay so now if you take bread butter so we have one transaction here and bread butter two and then bread butter three and then bread butter four bread butter five bread butter 6 and bread butter 7. So we do have this in all the rows, right? So in each and every transaction, I have this good combination that bread and butter is always a very good combination, right? So here the formula is, so the number of transaction of both, you have to get the count of transaction of both LHS plus RHS, the left hand side and right hand side divided by left hand side. So now if you see here, the confidence that I'm going to give for this bread butter, right? So it's like, so equal to, so seven slash seven. So that means totally you have seven rows and then each row has the combination of both left hand side and right hand side. So it's seven of seven, it's one. So I have given 0 0.6, right? So this can be changed into one also. Okay, so based on the data, this input points will be get changed. Okay, so I'm just trying to have it minimum of 0 0.6, not exactly 1, so that I can capture of more combos, right? So this is the formula for this, and I'm going to run this FP growth with assigning the support and confidence to it. Okay, so now this is executed, and next, what I'm going to do is I'm just creating a variable model. And I just invoke this FP growth and I fit my DF. The entire data I'm just fitting it to this particular model. Okay, so I'm just creating that. So it's, it is actually executing. Now, what is next? So first, model dot frequent item cell dot show. So I'm just going to display the frequent item cells. Okay. So if you see bread as a frequent item and then button as a frequent item and button and bread combination is a frequent item and then milk, milk and butter and then milk, button and bread and then milk and bread. So these are all some of the frequent items which is always being sold out, right? So uh, if you alter these values, this values will get changed. Okay. So now what is the next association rule? So I'm just going to display the association rule so the last one is model.transformdf.show. So what this will show you is display prediction for transaction. So it gives you the prediction so that based on that you can have your items being arranged in the shelf. And finally, like we are going to stop the Spark execution. So which is not needed when we are using the Spark shell. So if you are writing this code as a file or you are writing this in IntelliJ or Eclipse or any IDE, right? then this is required. So in this video, we just discussed how to execute an MLib program in the environment Spark. If you want to know more about Spark, I have given my Spark playlist link in the description box of this video where you can find a complete Spark videos.
And thanks for watching. If you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends. Thanks for watching.